name's Hilary Jocelyn and I'm a social worker. I've been a social worker for about 30 years and I've worked in the field of mental health most of that time. There are many different forms of self-harm. Um, sometimes people cut themselves, people may bite themselves, people may burn themselves with cigarettes, um, people may scratch themselves with a blunt object, people may swallow toxic substances that might burn their throat, sometimes people pull their hair, sometimes they'll bang their head against a wall. It's a way of expressing and releasing intense pain, emotional pain, and one of the only ways people have found to reduce emotional pain is to harm themselves because it produces something else which distracts them. Uh, sometimes people say it makes them feel numb, it gives them, sometimes people get quite euphoric that when, they're, when they're going through pain. It also gives somebody a sense of control. If you're really in a, in a situation where you don't have a lot of control over your environment or your life, uh, being able to self-harm is something that you can do that, can, can, that you have control over. I'd say it's probably most common in, sort of often can start in your early teens. Um, again, hitting, you know, at about the time when things get a bit, life becomes a bit more complicated often for somebody in their early teens. But I have heard of children self-harming as young as six and seven, so there's no real cookie cutter, you know, thing to when it actually happens. People do associate self-harming behaviours more with women than with men, but actually the research that I've looked at has said that it's not gender specific. Have I noticed an increase in self-harm behaviour over the last five years? Yes, I probably have. I think it's partly because people are beginning to talk about it more. There's less stigma because we are, there is more discussion about youth mental health and you can't really talk about youth mental health without talking about self-harm. It might not have increased over the last five years, but I think the discussion about it has increased. I think some of the behaviours that bring this on are um, external. You know, I think we live in a very stressful culture. It's very hard to be young. There's a lot of things that are often going on at home that can be worrying. There, um, I think anybody who's gone through childhood abuse and trauma, if there's alcohol and drugs in the house, um, if there's a lot of stress and a lot of pressure from outside as well to succeed, and to do well and to participate and to to acquire things and I think that can also be very a lot of pressure. It's, it's often a behaviour that's very linked to some kind of mental health difficulty. Many, many people who do self-harm, who use that behaviour, do have some kind of mental health difficulty like say depression or anxiety or um, difficulty regulating their emotions or post-traumatic stress. Well, I think it's not very understood. As I said, it's, it's something people are very ashamed of. There's a huge amount of shame attached to self-harm, um, and along with this shame goes the stigma. It's, it's swept under the rug because often people don't know. It's a very hidden behavior. Often people self-harm in areas of their body that where nobody can see. It's also often misunderstood. It's seen as, oh, just seeking attention, attention-seeking behaviors. Uh, and so people don't, they, they, they minimize the gravity of it. Would I classify it as an addictive behavior? I think it's a coping behavior. I think it's a behavior that people turn to when they really don't know what else to do. And for sure, I mean, that sometimes that's the history of addiction as well. I think it, it's, it becomes somebody's go-to when they're going through a lot of stress. It becomes something that, something that people do Sometimes very impulsively. Sometimes people self-harm without giving it a lot of thought. It's just sort of an, a, a, an instant reaction. The, the treatment for self-harm is probably quite similar to some of the treatment for, for substance use or for addiction because it would mean understanding what your triggers were. Often there's a lot of focus on just stopping the self-harm, like just don't do it. Just hide the scissors and don't do it. But then what do you do when you feel intense emotional pain? Because you've become used to the self-harm behavior. You can't just get someone to stop without giving them some tools 
and some ways of managing their, their, their intense emotions. I think there's a number of different ways to cope with self-harm and I think, you know, um, helping someone understand their emotions and understanding the things that trigger their emotions and helping them to sort of learn other ways of managing when they're feeling very intense, learning how to regulate their, their emotional response to something so that it doesn't kind of get up to the ceiling. There's a whole series of techniques sort of like distraction so that you think about something else. Sometimes people do something like pull elastic bands on their wrists or use ice. I ran a group once for, for women who self-harmed and we used to have a whole bowl of ice in the middle of the table and you know when they were feeling kind of particularly aroused emotionally they you know rub the ice on their wrist and we also sometimes would encourage people to take a cold shower. So something that just completely shifts your, your mind I once knew a woman who would, would self-harm using razor blades so because she was very impulsive so she agreed to put her razor blades in the freezer in a glass of water so that in order to get them she'd have to thaw them out and in the process of thawing them out it helped her to think of other things that she'd rather do. Something else that we would do is help look, look at um, a chain of events so look at what led up to the self-harm behaviour. So it's kind of like a chain, like what happened just before, and then just before that, and just before that, and eventually that might help the, the person to understand what their triggers were. Sometimes people who self-harm may actually also have issues with using substances, and that's something to really watch for because that definitely increases the risk and the danger because you know if some, quite a few people will self-harm once they're in, when they're intoxicated. So. Their, the judgment is obviously off with with this, with the substance use, and so you know what starts out as self harm could end up being very very tragic. So it, there is a risk for that. People can recover from self harm. I think that's a really important thing to know. People will say, "I used to self harm and I don't anymore," because they have had opportunities to learn how to manage those difficult emotions and feelings in other ways, in healthier ways. Your self-harm is probably a very typical and normal, natural response to something very difficult that's going on in life, either an external or an internal pressure. And there is help out there, and it's not something that you have to end up doing for years and years and years. There are ways and people out there who can help you find healthier ways of dealing with whatever it is you're dealing with. I think that's what I probably want to say to you. Um, if you can find someone that you can talk to about it and not feel, I know it's something that you probably very likely feel ashamed of and frightened about too because it's very scary and it might actually feel it's something you don't have a lot of control over as well, especially if it's impulsive. Uh, see if there's somebody out there that you can trust that you can talk to about it um, because there is help out there and it isn't who you are. I think that's another thing I want to say because you self-harm it, it's not it doesn't doesn't define who you are it's something that you do right now to cope but it isn't who you are and I think you know through help you'll 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 find that you're much much more than than, than someone who self-harms everything is going to be okay You can cut that, it doesn't matter, I just... We're only going to use like three minutes. Perfect, that makes me feel better because so, I was thinking I'm not very concise. You can say... So I will... Ha <laughs> ha